Take a listen at the Malian transitional president Colonel Asimi Goita deliver a national address on the eve of Mali's 64th Independence Day anniversary on the evening of September 21, 2024. It's a speech in which he gives an update on the current economic and political situation in the country, expressing his optimism that the country will hold elections and return to a peaceful democratic rule as soon as possible, as well as reacts for the first time to the September 17, 2024 terror attack on the Faladi Gendarmerie School near Bamako, in which several terrorists were neutralized and others captured by the Malian army, but after they had caused significant damage at the institution. Malian, Malian. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, I am particularly happy to address you on the eve of the celebration of our country's accession to independence. September 22nd is engraved in our collective memory as the day when the Malian people decided to put an end to colonial domination by proclaiming the new free state of Mali. At this solemn moment, we are paying vibrant homage to the Fathers of Independence, with President Madibo Keita at their head. This homage takes on a very special meaning at a time when Mali is engaged in the reconquest of its true sovereignty. We must resolutely follow the path traced 64 years ago. I also bow to the memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifices to the fatherland, that we will be eternally grateful to them. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, the commemoration of our independence is a specific opportunity to remember the constant efforts of our people to build a strong state and a prosperous nation. On my instructions, the government has for its part continued the actions necessary to meet the needs of our populations in several areas. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, the security issue is today the priority concern of the Malian people. This year, our national holiday is celebrated in a context marked by the major strategic operation to retake our land, led by the farmer, and aimed at restoring the territorial integrity of the country and definitively ridding it of the terrorist threat. The armed and security forces have indeed carried out stabilization and reconstruction operations in the recaptured regions, thus allowing the gradual return of public services, schools and essential infrastructure. These remarkable successes are the result of the coordination of military operations and the redeployment of forces in areas like Berra de Salite, Anephis, Kedal and Agelok. The terrorist attacks that occurred on Tuesday, September 17, remind us once again of the urgent need to remain vigilant and maintain an exemplary operational posture in all circumstances, by keeping in mind the innocent people cowardly murdered during this barbaric aggression. I also extend my best wishes for a speedy recovery to the injured and salute the professionalism of the intervention forces. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, investment efforts continue within the framework of the acquisition of military equipment and reforms for the improvement of the living and working conditions of men in order to strengthen the operational capacities of the armed and security forces in addition the pooling of capacities and operational support within the framework of the confederation of sahil states continue Malian, Malian.
Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, in order to strengthen trust between citizens and institutions, in particular the judicial institution, our justice system has largely adapted to the context of the fight against impunity with the creation of new structures. The implementation of major reforms such as the review of the Penal Code of the Code of Criminal Procedure as well as the adoption by the Council of Ministers of the Draft Ordinance on the status of the judiciary aims to make justice more efficient, accessible and respectful of the rights of citizens. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, I salute the resilience of the Malian people who remain dignified despite a difficult economic context. The authors of the transition work tirelessly to improve the living conditions of all our fellow citizens. However, it is important to remember that our economy is suffering the impact of security crises which have led to the increase in military spending to the detriment of other sectors. Despite these challenges, our country has maintained efficient management of public finances, controlling inflation below the community standard of 3%. As of July 31, 2024, the recovery made by the revenue structures stood at 1,291 billion CFA francs. At the same time, the Treasury mobilized on the regional financial market a total amount of 479 billion CFA francs in order to finance the deficit of the state budget, despite a context characterized by an increase in costs, financing, and the liquidity tension in the UMOA, all of which demonstrates investors' confidence in Mali's signature. The resources transferred to local authorities amounted to 440 billion CFA francs in 2024 compared to approximately 412 billion CFA francs in 2023. That is an increase of 6.82%. Furthermore, to ensure a proper supply of basic necessities to the country at a controlled price over the period from September 1, 2023 to July 31, 2024, the exemptions from duties and taxes granted to customs cordons amounted to more than 274 billion CFA francs, or 34.62% of the revenues generated during the period concerned. I salute all the stakeholders who contribute to economic development efforts, particularly in the rural industrial sectors of trade, services and crafts. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, in 2024, the General Agricultural Census was launched, paving the way for the digitalization of farms. Rural agricultural developments continue to sustainably exploit the potential of the Niger and Senegal rivers. The government is strengthening interest supply and reacting to the price of cotton and grain, and developing agricultural research to improve seeds. Despite the challenges, measures are planned including the promotion of alternative methods, the development of a law for agricultural investments and the creation of agro-industrial hubs. These actions demonstrate our commitment to an agricultural, resilient and prosperous Mali. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, in the field of health and social development, efforts have been made to improve the accessibility of health services to the population through the construction or rehabilitation as well as the equipment of several health infrastructures. De plusieurs infrastructures sanitaires.
In addition, solidarity actions and the fight against exclusion have been carried out towards our populations living in precarious conditions or hit by crises of various kinds. Aware of the role of youth in national construction, the transition structures are sparing no effort to ensure that they are healthy, well-trained, have love for the homeland and are capable of carrying out all actions for the development and defense of the homeland. In the field of education, the state has made significant efforts to build or upgrade basic and secondary education establishments, for which I commend the good organization of end-of-year exams. In higher education, the construction of the artificial intelligence and robotics center continues. The University of Sikasso has welcomed its first students. Actions are underway for the operationalism of the universities of Gao, Timbuktu, Kai and Bayangara. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, in order to strengthen the capacities of our public structures and improve the provision of services provided to the population, mass recruitment was carried out. For the year 2023, the recruitment of 1,417 agents and also 776 new civil servants will be recruited for the budget year 2024. Vocational training and job creation also constitute a priority for the transitional authorities. It is in this context that the National Strategy for Entrepreneurship in Mali, resulting from a five-year action plan for the period 2025-2029, was adopted. Great attachment is also given to the socio-professional integration of rural youth through the Proud of Them project. The government is working for the implementation of a better JAR policy so that Malian women can fully play their role in the socio-economic development of the country. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, Malian diplomacy has remained active to defend the interests of our country. The strengthening of our relations with strategic partners respectful of our choices has opened up new opportunities and promoted our presence on the international scene. Today, Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger embody the rebirth of an Africa that is freeing itself and inventing its unity and development on new bases. The Sahel States Confederation created on July 6, 2024, was undoubtedly a key element in the geopolitical reconfiguration of the region and beyond. As you know, I was honored by Their Excellencies Presidents Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso and Abdurrahmani Chiani of Niger to ensure the inaugural presidency of the Confederation. This mark of esteem and confidence commits us to strengthen our efforts to achieve our noble Pan-African ideals of the Confederation. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, the Malian populations have faced floods in recent weeks that have affected several localities in the country, causing loss of human life and significant material damage. Faced with the floods, the rescuers of the transition declared a state of national disaster and put into action the centers for coordination and management of crises and disasters. Measures are being taken to better manage the consequences of these disasters in order to provide relief to the suffering populations. In this regard, I welcome the national solidarity that has been expressed towards them, but our major concern for our populations remains the energy issue. 
To address this, several solar power plant construction projects have been launched as part of the energy mix to improve the supply of Malian electricity. Malians, my dear compatriots, for the transitional authorities, the issue of sovereignty is inseparable from that of national unity. The inter-Malian dialogue has demonstrated the willingness of our people to resolve these problems autonomously. The National Charter for Peace and Reconciliation will certainly consolidate the foundations of our living together. Also, the artistic and cultural being which has been institutionalized and constitutes a real factor of mixing of young people and consultations of national unity. Beyond that, it is also conceived as a real regional development project. Malians, Malians, my dear compatriots, it is in the sacred union of Malians for Malians that we will achieve our development objectives. Together, we must work so that the next elections are a real success in order to allow our country to continue serenely and sovereignly on the path of renewal. Finally, I wish all Malians a happy 64th birthday in peace and harmony. May Allah bless Mali and protect Malians. Thank you.